Welcome to my lecture online. Now this one is a difficult problem if you ask to factor this. And so we're going to do this twice, once using this method, and then on the next video we're going to use the FOIL method, and then see again which one you like best. But first of all, let's see if we can factor out some common factors. Notice we can factor out an x squared, and they're all even, so at the very least we can factor out a 2. Let's do that and see what we end up with. So this becomes equal to 2 times x squared as a common factor. That leaves us with a 15x squared minus 52x and plus 45. Now notice that these two numbers are divisible by 3, but 52 isn't. Hmm. So that means that this is the simplest we can make it before we're going to try to factor that. Now notice if we use the methodology here where we're going to rewrite it as 2x squared times, we separate the first and the last term, 15x squared plus 45, and then we're going to look for two numbers in here that will add up to the middle term. Now notice, since the last number is positive and the middle, the middle term is uh, negative, that means that both of these must be negative numbers. So minus something x, minus something x. And we're looking for two numbers. When we add them together, and they're two negative numbers, when we add them together, we get minus 52. And when we multiply them together, then we get, well, let's see. When we multiply together, we get the following. The product of the two numbers is equal to the product of these two together. 15 times 45, well, 10 times 45 is 450. 5 times that is 225, that would be 675. And the sum must equal minus 52. So when the numbers become big like that, it gets a little bit more challenging. So we know that when we add them, we get a negative 52. When we multiply the two numbers together, we get a positive 675. They're both negative. If you multiply, you get 675. When you add them, you get negative 52. Since this number is pretty big, the two numbers must be close together. So let's see here. If we divide it half and half, we get minus 26. Multiply times minus 26. What is that equal to? Well, sometimes you need a calculator to figure that out. So you take 26, you square that, you get 676. So we got really close to the product we're looking for. So we know that the numbers differ by just a little bit. So maybe we'll try minus 25 and minus 27. Let's see what that multiplies to. 25 times 27, 675. So there we go. That's how we do that. So why did I know to start with these numbers rather than something else? Well, since the product was a really big number, I knew that the two numbers had to be close together in size. And so I tried 26 and 26 because that adds up to minus 52, wasn't it? But 25 plus 27 together add up to minus 52. And when I multiply, I get 675. So those are the two numbers I want. So here a minus 25 and a minus 27. Now I can go ahead and group them in groups of two terms and factor out whatever is common. So this is equal to 2x squared times, so we have 15 and 25, I can factor out a 5, and I can factor out an x, which leaves me with 3x minus 5. Over here, let's see, can I factor out a, um, well, I can factor out a 9, because 27 is divisible by 9, and 45 is divisible by 9, and I can factor out a minus 9, which leaves me with a 3x minus 5. And notice I now have two terms, and each of the two terms contains a 3x minus 5, which can be factored out. So this is equal to 2x squared times a 3x minus 5, and I'm left with a 5x minus 9. And there's the factored form of our original problem. It was challenging, but do it very systematically will actually work. So first we factor out a common factor, then we realize that we can write this as a sum of four terms. Notice that the middle term is now split up into two middle terms. We know that the two middle, the two middle terms here added up together gives me back to minus 52, so the sum must be minus 52. And the product of the two numbers must equal the product of these two numbers, which end up being 675. 
So I ch started out bit using 26 and 26. When I add them together, I get the minus 52 because they're both negative. And when I multiply, I get almost what I was looking for, but not quite. So I tried 25 and 27. When I multiply those together, I get 675. When I add them together, I get the minus 52. And so that was the right combination. You plug those two numbers in here. You then group them in groups of two. You factor out a common factor. And that's how you end up with a factored form. And that is how it's done.